Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 532. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 531 to 533. Hey, in this trick here, we want to see how to count blanks with a dynamic range. We only want to count blanks there. We only want to count blanks there. Now, before we do this formula, let's talk a little bit about um, blanks versus empty cells. Up here, I have some data. This is an empty cell, and this is a formula that's delivering a blank, double quote, double quote, to the cell. Some uh, formulas do that. If we use the function count blanks equals count, if only I could type this whole range here, it will not distinguish between an empty cell and a blank delivered from a formula. If you wanted to do something like that, count empty cells only, well, there's counta. Counta is awesome because it counts all kinds of different things. It'll count numbers, words, or even uh, formulas delivering blanks. So if I highlight this whole range, it'll give me five. Now, that's not what I want here. I really want one because there's only one empty cell. Well, I could simply amend this by saying columns. If only I could type. <laughs> columns, and I'm going to highlight all these. There are six columns, so that'll deliver a 6 minus the 5 will give us 1. Now, on to our exciting formula. Uh, this comes from the Mr. Excel message board. There's the link right there. Uh, now, the first thing is we're going to need a dynamic range, right? And it's got to change when we enter new data. And uh, the first part is how can we figure out how far out we've gone. So right here, we've gone out three cells within this range. Here, we've gone four. Um, let's just look at a little array here. How about if we just said uh, open parentheses, hey, tell me if anything in this range is not less than, greater than, blank, double quote. This will give us an array of trues and falses. I'm going to hit the F9 key. True, false, true, false, false, false. Control Z. Now, uh, if we're going to use the match function to look up uh, a position, because match is great, it'll find the ordinal or relative position of an item in the list, we need to convert these trues and falses to uh, ones, but not zeros. So instead of doing our normal you know, uh, double negative, right? what would double negative do? It would convert it all to ones and zeros. F9, Control Z. Let's just do divi one divided by, because the divided by is not going to like those zeros. I'm going to hit uh, F9. So now we have a string of errors divided by zeros and ones. Now we can use match with some value. Since the biggest number we're ever going to get here is 1, Control Z. Notice there's duplicates, Control Z. I'm going to say match. Ma <laughs> That's the third time match. Match. The lookup value, hey, 2, because 2 is always going to be bigger than any of those 1's. The lookup array. And finally, the key to, one of the keys is that this match argument, we don't want an exact match. We want it approximate. Because if this is bigger than any of the numbers here, it keeps searching until it finds the last number, which will be exactly this number 1 right there in the array, the number 1. Close parentheses. Control Shift Enter. So there's our three position, and there's our four. Now, what are we going to do with that? Well, you could use offset or index to create a dynamic range. So let's look at index. Let's look what, at what index does first before we see how to create a dynamic range. There's index, and the array is the array to look up. And by the way, this is a little example, right? This could be some huge row of data that you're entering, and you need to count the blanks before the last bit of entered data. So there's our little array, comma, and then the row number. Hey, right now, index will actually deliver the T to the cell. Control, Shift, Enter. Double click and send it down. Oh, but that's not what we want. We want the actual cell reference. We want this index to say, hey, that's the cell C6. So watch this. Index delivers a value, just like lookup functions uh, do, unless you put it into the context of a cell reference. So right now we're saying, hey, go from A6 to T. No way. 
index is program. Once you put it into the context of a cell reference or a range here, it knows to act like a cell reference. Now, if we highlight this and hit F9, it's going to show us that it found the values. When we run formula evaluator, we'll be able to explicitly see that that, in fact, is a range. It's really amazing. Its index is delivering C6. I'm going to control Z. Now we have our dynamic range. Let's just do count blank. I got my fingers crossed. Yeah, I typed it correct that time. Control Shift Enter. Double click and send it down. Now, if I come over here, it's going to tell us two. Now, uh, another, let's run Formula Evaluator. Formula Evaluator. Right there, but the keyboard shortcut. Tough. Alt T U F. Alt T U F. Now, let's see this. I'm going to hit Enter instead of Evaluate. It's evaluating. We see the 5. Now watch this index. Boom, it evaluates to E6. And that's exactly what that is. That is just beautiful. Index is a context sensitive function. Put it in the context of a cell reference, and boom, it delivers a cell reference. Now, we use count blank. There's a couple other ways we can do this. I'm going to copy that dynamic range. How about equals count if? Here's the range, control V. I'm kind of amazed because count if range doesn't like arrays, but this index construction here sneaks under the radar and count if will deal with it. Hey, there's the range. What's our criteria for counting? Double quotes. Double quotes twice for blank. Control Shift Enter, double click and send it down. Pretty cool there. Now, uh, what if you wanted to use offset? Well, uh, this match right here. copy. We could just use the same count blank equals count blank. Right? And instead of using the index, we'd use offset. Offset is great. It says, hey, where do you want to start for your dynamic range? I'm going to start in that cell reference right there. Comma. How many rows do you want to go uh, up or down? None. Zero or left out by default. How many columns left or right do you want to move from that starting position? Zero or that's the default if you leave it out. How high is this range always going to be? One or left out? The default, it will assume it's one. And then the width, our match. That'll give us one, two, three, four, five right now. Close parenthesis on the offset. Close parenthesis on the count blank. Control Shift Enter. Now, there is another way to do this also. This match is pretty esoteric. There's a more straightforward. I kind of like this one. This is my favorite one of all of them. Uh, but we could just do an if statement. Hey, if these, any of these are not blank, then what do we want? Column. Now, right now, if we just did column, that would work if we never moved this a more robust way. Because right now, column will deliver, because uh, it's an array now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because A is the first column. But if we want it to be more robust, we'll say, hey, subtract from all those numbers 1 to 6, 1. That'll give us 0 to 5, so then we add 1. Close parentheses. Now, broop, highlight this, F9. Three fall, um, 1 false 3 and a, and a 5, a bunch of falses. If we want the 5, can't we just use Control Z and then Max? It'll give us the biggest column always, max. And so max is, in essence, substituting for um, uh, control shift enter. It's substituting for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for the match part of that. Now, let's use this in a formula. I'll show you a cool little thing right here. You've seen how I use the clipboard sometimes. But watch this. I'm going to copy this, come over here, and I'm going to hit Alt, Enter, Enter, just to like put it down at the bottom while I mess with this little Control V thing I just copied. It looks like I didn't. Oh, there it is. I'm going to come over here to make this easier to see. I'm going to get rid of that extra parenthesis. Now, I want to replace this whole thing here, here. So I'm just going to highlight this, Control C, backspace, 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 and then highlight the match part of this. Control V. So all we've done is we put the max if column construction in uh, instead of the match for the relative position of the last item in that list. Control Shift Enter, 
Double click and send it down. Wow, that is more fun than I think is legally allowed for counting blanks with a dynamic range. But you know, it all comes from the amazing Mr. Excel message board. Nothing like hanging out there. Maddie, EB08, and Dominique at the Mr. Excel message board all. I made a post there and provided these amazing solutions. Hey, uh, Dominique's been around for a long time in the Mr. Excel message board. Man, he's answered lots of my questions. He has a website totally awesome, excel-central.com. You got to check that out for excellent Excel resources. Hey, all right, we'll see you next trick.